No, no, don't blame him. No, I'm glad to be happy. No, it was, it was my idea. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking moments from you season four. No, no, I'm not interested. No people, not interested. For this list, we're looking at the times Netflix's addictive show had us gasping in its two-part fourth season. Warning, spoilers for parts one and two ahead. What moment shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Adam's murder. As we learned in part one, Tom Lockwood is a powerful man of immense wealth who likes to insert himself into his daughter's life even though she wants nothing to do with him. My father is the worst man alive and I'm his favorite daughter. Everything about her suddenly makes sense. Joe slash Jonathan talks Kate into seeing her father for dinner, but his appearance doesn't end there. After Phoebe has a mental health crisis, Kate complains about Adam's control over his new wife's life. Seeing yet another opportunity to offer her unsolicited help, Tom has Adam killed. The problem here is that you think money can save you. This isn't about money. It's always about money. It's never not about money. Naturally, Kate is furious when she finds out. She may have despised Adam, but she didn't want him dead. The fact Tom can put a hit out on someone with such ease is equally shocking and disturbing. Number nine, Roald tries to kill Joe, twice. To say Joe has a wild group of new friends is an understatement. Four episodes in, and they were still surprising us with their shameless hard partying and unending insults. I've always admired a man like you who doesn't care how he presents. I'm so pleased you're here. But the Hamsey holiday takes a dark turn when Joe slash Jonathan and Roald have a heated confrontation that quickly escalates to violence. It's you, isn't it? Did you kill Malcolm because you're in love with Kate? No, did you? You know, it's funny, this game. Every year, someone gets hurt. Roald delivered a gasp-worthy push out of the window, followed by holding Joe slash Jonathan at gunpoint and chasing him through the woods. Here I come, Jonathan! And after all that, Joe still helped him out of the fiery dungeon and refuses to pin all the murders on him as instructed by Reese. Talk about forgiveness. Number eight, Lady Phoebe gets kidnapped. Part two didn't waste any time telling us who the mysterious photographer was. I do know you. I've seen you taking pictures. You're a photographer. No, I'm your friend. We only saw the woman, who we come to know as Dawn, looking at Joe. So when it turns out that she's obsessed with Lady Phoebe, it's quite a surprise. I try to be a good friend. I really do. I know. All those years watching you on the telly, following your social media, I could feel the connection between us. Phoebe is rightfully terrified of this unstable fangirl turned kidnapper, but she uses her inherent sweetness to keep her stalker calm. The ever heroic Jonathan Moore comes to her rescue, and it doesn't take long for Dawn to start spiraling. I don't want you to panic. You are both in danger. The killer is here. If you let me in, I can explain everything. I don't believe him. Ultimately, Phoebe saves herself by gaining control of the knife. The whole ordeal was intense and frankly bizarre. Number seven, Joe jumps off a bridge. Joe's done four seasons worth of terrible things and has experienced varying levels of remorse for his actions. You have this notion that you're an especially bad person. Join a bloody club. What do you think everyone else sees in the mirror? But this season, destroying Marianne's life and being responsible for her death leaves him broken. He loses hope that he'll ever be able to sustain a relationship, knowing that his track record proves it will always end in death. You and Kate have a future. No, we don't. Of course you do. Why not? Because I will kill her. Will you? So he decides that his own death is the solution. But surely he's not going to actually take his own life, right? Well, he's surprised us a lot this season, and things were not looking so good after he takes the plunge. But Joe survives and gets his happy ending, for now. She's here to change the world. Though the killing part's also much easier now that I'm honest with myself about it. I'm just here to help. Number six, the ghostly return of love. Despite her apparent death at the end of season three, fans were still holding out hope it wasn't the last we'd seen of Love Quinn. I think she will survive, like how Candace did, 
and come back to get revenge in season four, killing Joe and ending the show for good. The you writers delivered in the season four finale when Joe goes on another head trip and sees his deceased wife. You should be thanking her. Hi, Joe. Like Beck, she's there to remind him of his growing body count and inability to escape from who he really is. And to have fun taunting him, of course. While Love's special appearance may have been spoiled in the trailer for part two, it is still a moment we'll never forget. What is love, Joe? Uh, Lowercase. Uh, Tell me and I'll give you the key. Number five, Reese is the eat the rich killer. Part one's biggest reveal was the identity of the prolific Eat the Rich killer. Nice. Oh, Joe. Within the group of potential suspects, Reese Montrose wasn't exactly at the top of our list. He was the most down to earth out of everyone. Quite a thing, that. Tell no one your sordid life story for 30 years, and write it down. Suddenly, millions know your every shame. For what it's worth, I didn't find your book sordid. Oh. Fellow man with a shit childhood, then. Plus, he was a political figure with a very busy schedule, and it would be a challenge for him to devote time to being a serial killer, unlike, say, Adam, Roald, or Connie. When he gives Joe his big monologue about how he loathes the elite, his motive sort of starts to make sense, if a bit flimsy. Think of the positive. One less spoiled, violent little shit on this earth. You really are the eat the rich killer. You hate them. However, Part two shows us who the real killer is. Number four, Joe had Marianne locked in a cage. We didn't think Joe really let Marianne go, did we? I was putting you on that train. I let you go to show you I'm not what you think. I'm not a killer. Well, kinda. It was an uncharacteristic decision, but it seemed like he wanted to change his murderous ways and create a comfortable life in academia. But that fantasy ends once he's tasked with the disposal of multiple bodies, including ones he's killed. Look familiar? Yes, Joe. I found your old lover. She's a feisty one. When Nadia finds his secret lair with Marianne in the glass cage, we realize that Joe's been lying to us and himself. Goldberg, his name is Joe Goldberg. My name is Marianne Bellamy. I'm Nadia. All right, let me help you, okay? The fictional Reese Montrose in Joe's head helps him recall drugging, kidnapping, and imprisoning the woman he thought he let go. Number three, Nadia helps Marianne fake her death. After getting over the shock of seeing her professor's prisoner, Nadia springs into action, quickly trying to free Marianne. No, don't. He put in the wrong code, he'll know. He'll get in the loop. Okay, I'm gonna call 999. You can't call the police. What? Listen, you are in shock. She may be a stranger, but Nadia knows the right thing to do. The two devise a plan to trick Joe. However, we don't know about plan B at first. So we're heartbroken when it looks like the most important person in Marianne's life will be taken away from her, and she seemingly lost the will to live. They think I relapsed, Joe. I'll never see my daughter again. You might as well kill me, Joe. You might as well kill me. <laughs> How do I fix this? Little did we know that Nadia was the one texting Joe. Though that part of the plan went off without a hitch, Marianne had to enact plan B and look as though she had taken her own life or so he thinks. Sadly, Nadia faced serious consequences for her part, but we are so relieved that Marianne made it back home to Juliet. Number two, Joe frames Nadia. Since episode one, Nadia has been the expert on mysteries. So when she finally starts to find Professor Jonathan more suspicious, we know she's going to learn the ugly truth. Okay, mm. okay. Did I see you coming from my flat? Are you, you looking for me? From breaking in on multiple occasions to helping his prisoner escape, she took some serious risks. Just when we think she'd gone undetected, an incredibly smug Joe shows up to ruin her life. Tell them all about me. No one's gonna believe you. So you'll live. You're right, I want that for you. Honestly, my greatest pride as a teacher is that I could help you grow. He planted evidence in her room, killed her boyfriend, and is framing Nadia for it. 
and the way he calmly explains that she's about to go down is absolutely chilling. You have so many gifts. I'm looking forward to watching what you do next. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. A golden reveal. Joe's seen some stuff, but this is on another level. Uh, what? Do it. Louis the Sun King and Dagger. Beg me. Please. This one, me. <laughs> Not the secret I was expecting. Tom Lockwood knows Joe's real identity. We knew this guy was connected, but wow. Looking forward to getting to know you, Joe. No. Kate's dad never stopped interfering. It's sad to see Kate realize the life she's built isn't her own. I keep you happy. I keep you safe, as I would any investment of this magnitude. Joe finds Kate holding a knife. Even if you didn't believe she was the killer, grabbing the murder weapon is not a good look. Joe kills Tom Lockwood. Well, maybe we shouldn't be too surprised by this. You're gonna kill me now? Why? Because I'm a survivor? Because I had what it takes to not get eaten alive? Catherine gets to say, Daddy's bad, because I bubble wrapped your entire world. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Joe's alter ego. You could say we've gotten to know Joe Goldberg pretty well over the past three seasons of You. We know he has a myriad of problems. Abandonment issues, a savior complex, unresolved trauma, the list goes on. This isn't me. The spell had grown stronger. I would never hurt her. This isn't me. Joe. I'm not that man. His eyes were empty like no one was there. And we're used to Joe hallucinating, whether he's seeing people from his past or other versions of himself. But we did not anticipate him having an underlying dissociative identity disorder. Joe can be scary, but this dark Reese Montrose-inspired version is unpredictable, and the cruelty he's capable of is truly terrifying. I'd love to be gentle, but you won't listen when I tell you how you are living is unsustainable. You'll end up in prison or worse, you need to embrace your truth, Joe. Our jaws hit the floor when we realized that this whole time he was fighting against himself and not some crazed killer looking for a murder buddy. Admit who you really are and you'll remember where you put her, Joe. The writers really outdid themselves with this one, and we can't wait to see what's next. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.